probably answer in that discussion some of the questions I've anticipated. Um, something that I, I doubt there's much attention to, but the first step in what uh, we hope is an assisted living project on Portland Way South will take place uh, over the next couple of weeks. There's a, a special planning commission meeting set uh, with the purpose of changing uh, the zoning classification, which is currently this thing called residential office and moving to a more a commercial uh, zoning classification. So if you're watching, you can think in your mind's eye, uh, the north of Mill Creek and east of the orthopedic center. So that parcel uh, is uh, hopefully the one that gets developed. And uh, so stay tuned for that. That's a good thing. I think uh, without getting too far into the discussion of housing, I think, and I often ask myself, what, are, what is the city doing? What's the community doing? Uh, to address what pretty evident uh, housing shortage and uh, although this kind of development doesn't uh, create new residential housing in any specific way yeah, what we've seen with other assisted living uh, facilities in the area certainly Magnolia the one that is in uh, Galleon operating now that people think of is that many of those people move from their single family home into that assisted living setting and uh, you know qu quite often that opens up uh, among the nicer homes or homes in the community that younger families can move so well it doesn't satisfy the need for home buyers who want something brand new right off the you know right uh, out of the carpenter's uh, saw uh, what I think it does is allow opportunities for people to move into those homes as people, um, you know, go into assisted living. So that's a, a small thing that's going on uh, also on the housing front before we hit some other issues. Uh, I'm optimistic about a subdivision under development, uh, one of what I've felt for a long time is one of the better parcels for development uh, from a residential point of view. Uh, I think they're trying to get the transaction put in place and that sets the, again, a little bit like the, uh, the assisted living. It's a first step in uh, getting some new housing in the community and it's something that you know, a handful or a lot of people have worked on for, for uh, months, it seems like, uh, and all that effort. Uh, although it's very early in the stage, we're starting to see that. The third issue on the housing front that's worth noting is uh, uh, on Thursday, there's a meeting that has to do with the variance for the uh, Carter Crossing uh, apartments, the ones that are currently under construction. Uh, but right on the heels of that, uh, we expect uh, a permission or, a, or notice of the fact that uh, the developers want to proceed with the rest of that development. So I think in, in a lot of people's minds, those cheering for that apartment complex to do well, fill up and, and meet that housing need that some, sometimes gets talked about. And those that were a little skeptical about it, it looks like it's going well and uh, well, I'm certainly not at the hub of the wheel in the discussions about current rentals. Uh, I am close enough to the center discussion to know that uh, they want to proceed with building those apartments. So those are three different pieces of addressing the uh, housing situation that get at uh, filling some niches and, and I think it's an important part of growth in the community. You know you can have the, the uh, announced uh, expansion of Shutterfly and some other development of things that happen in terms of jobs but if you don't have the housing to match, you end up with jobs, but you don't end up with new residents. So I'm pleased to see some of that moving forward. And, uh, you know, like the usual good news, I'm quick to report and stuff that's not so good news, I'm try I do my best to quickly explain. Um, so switching to that topic, uh, I, I imagine nearly every a uh, person in town, I'm sure at least everybody who's watching this or will be touched by it with a Facebook share or one thing or another, uh, is wondering what all those lines are uh, up, uh, up and down along Harding Way. You know, I think it was Saturday night I came through town 
And there was a resurrection of Pokemon up there. And so some people may be wondering if that's the remnant of the Pokemon. It wasn't. It's, uh, uh, it's uh, more a preview of coming attractions. Um, what those represent, and, and I'm certainly not somebody that can decode all the arrows and what the uh, numeric and, and, um, and letter references relate to, but the, the short of it is, the long and the short of it, the short of it is, that nearly every handicap ramp along uh, the Harding Way corridor is either going to need to be replaced pretty much how it is or replaced in other modifications made. So that hit us, um, gosh, I guess Friday morning. Uh, there was a meeting called a pre-construction meeting. Quite a bit of concern about that was raised and today uh, as late as six o'clock it's not like I'm here every night at 6, but when I went home a little while ago at 6, uh, there, were, there continued to be three ODOT trucks. So they're, they're uh, working overtime, one might say. And the, the takeaway from it is that all of the ramps that are out of compliance with 2017 standards are going to need to be replaced. Um, city didn't know about that until I said Friday morning. And um, it, it appears for that to go forward, the project itself, we're going to have to determine a way to pay for all that extra curbing. There's actually even some sidewalk out um, <clears throat> near 6th Avenue, kind of be between um, Pounder and 6th, where there's an area where there's not sidewalk. So uh, in order to be able to qualify for the federal funds, which are a large part of the overall cost of the project, we're going to need to do all this compliance. So, um, in a world when the revenues to do highway projects uh, got smaller, in spite of the fact that everybody's paying a higher gas tax, uh, the squeeze is on. So, uh, we're waiting to see. I thought maybe before we went on air that uh, we we get a number uh, in terms of the of the projected increase, but. Um, that's in front of us. That's in the category of, of, uh, of bad news uh, in, from the perspective of unexpected costs. So, so we got some good news with some jobs, some traction on the uh, opportunity for the new housing in two or three areas, but uh, yeah, quite honestly a setback on the largest uh, paving project that, that's in our now what might be smaller uh, set of paving projects. So, want to let you know that's going on, and um, you know we're, we'll. You know, I promise you, we'll do our best to protect the taxpayers' money, but it it looks like it's uh, one of those things where the city's um, uh, going to be expected to pay, and I certainly don't have any desire to see the project delayed or, in worst case, um, somehow canceled. So, wish me luck. Uh, we'll try to figure out a balancing act. So um, those things are ongoing. Um, I want to finish before we go to questions to talk about what was a little bit of a flurry of activity on on uh, Facebook generally. I don't, you know, thing I like best about this medium is not talking on Monday nights, but I really enjoy that. I. I I talk to enough people who use it as a source of information to know, um, even if I, even if I hated doing it, I would uh, believe it does serve a, a benefit. But quite honestly, without being a cornball, the the best thing about keeping an eye on the various um, Facebook sites and comments that are made is a, it gives me a chance to listen, and since I don't have a Facebook page. It, it causes me not sometimes not to be able to respond. So I think overall, I'm trying to say that's a good thing, and I don't like the, the personal stuff a lot, but the, the criticism about how we're doing, what we're doing, it's, it's valuable, and uh, without asking for, a, for a, a social media black eye, the, the comments, good and bad, are uh, of value. On Wednesday of last week, it kind of blew up over the horizon. Uh, 
it was an interesting discussion and that was a discussion about something I talked about I believe it was the week before and that was the misbehavior of what I think is a relatively small number of galleons not so finest or kids that have a bad moment I think that's probably more the case of the really serious situation that happened last week but the, the short version of the story is um, a lot of comments about how the city has or should address what I see as a at worst an intermittent problem uh, down at, at the park um, I had the chance to be down there I believe three times last week so I've spent you know some time down there and by and large if you want to if you want to feel good about why you live in Galleon or feel good about the direction of the town go down there. So a lot of parents having a lot of fun, grandparents having a lot of fun. Oh, never mind. It's all about the kids. But everybody down there is having a good time. And so it upsets us, me, and uh, take very serious the need to address this misbehavior before something as... Um, I think fun and valuable for the community uh, somehow gets tacked with a, a, a bad reputation. You know, the reputation sometimes is deserved. And in this particular case, I want to take a lot of action on a couple different areas uh, to make sure that it's a safe place that people want to go to uh, and without it becoming you know, a focus of enforcement that makes the tension among the kids who are acting up down there worse and sets up some sort of uh, conflict situation with our local police. So, um, you know, clearly what happened was taken care of uh, real quickly. Um, it, it was balanced with some other priorities. When uh, I spoke with the chief, and I, don't, I mean that in a real positive way, the officer that was working on it was conducting another interview and by the middle of the day had addressed the issue, got the word back, and uh, I think it was sufficiently addressed. So uh, I don't want to dwell on it too much, but some good things happened. There was an adult who took responsibility, made us aware of it, filed the police report that I talked about before. I mean, there's this tendency not to want to get involved. And you can't have it both ways. You can't have a safe community where um, bad actors is the wrong expression, but a kid who makes a mistake where they're called out or, or um, called into account. <clears throat> so I appreciate us being notified. And then uh, I think it should give everybody some confidence. It's at all familiar with the situation, with how quickly the police... Um, uh, you know, found out who it was, and uh, and without getting into the detail of what's an ongoing case, um, I think in a bad situation we found out it was about as good as you can get. That the it wasn't uh, this a, a cliched family that doesn't give a flying leap. You know, people are upset about it. We understand that the kids banned from the park, uh, but. The final point, the main point is we're reaching out, and I think we'll have some success reaching out to the schools to come up with a solution there. What we know in a couple weeks is every kid who lives west of Portland, or excuse me, east of Portland Way, is going to go through that park on the way home from school, either to activities down at the uh, High Sea Park field or home to whatever, you know, because that's where everybody lives. And so I think it's real important to come up with a way to uh, not have that uh, facility overrun with kids who are, from my point of view, looking for something to do. So uh, we're not going to transfer some of the complaints about the inappropriate language and, and mostly harmless misbehavior that, that uh, interrupted playing on, the, on the, the old playground, if you will. We're not going to be part of allowing that to transfer itself across the street. So uh, <clears throat> we're going to continue to be on it, work with the schools, uh, parents or citizens that see that. 
you know, you do what you got to do. But I'd suggest not intervening. I'd intervene with your phone, call the police, don't come down there. Uh, it's not their only job, but this resource is important enough to us uh, to make sure it develops uh, on the good reputation it started off on. And like I, I'm prone to this, but the last thing I want to say, the smile on my face is, we're getting quotes for cameras. So we're not going to put up with that stuff, you know. So if you go down there, you know, don't do anything you wouldn't want your mother or your best friend to see because it's going to be on camera. And I think that protects people. And I don't think it intrudes on anybody's privacy. I just think it, it, uh, it's not going to allow that kind of uh, vandalism and trouble down there. So, All right, I'll get off that. I don't want to sound too mean, but... Uh, it's really, a, it's really an important thing, and uh, so I'm going to hit on those things. I think that's that's mostly what I've what we have. We got some work to do on the on the um, on this roadway, the Harding Way project. But um, I guess that's what that's what I get to do, or that's what I what I'm you know charged with that responsibility. As far as tomorrow tomorrow night on council. I know there's a couple councilmen who are huge, are huge Indians fans. They'd probably tell you the same thing. Don't spend a lot of time in the council meeting. It probably won't last long. There's one issue that will be voted on. There, there's always stuff that will come up. One issue that will be voted on, and that's changing the ordinance on the length of cul-de-sacs. There's to allow not to have some limitation on that. So that is... You got to get really deep into that zoning and planning stuff to for that to tickle your funny bone. So that's what we have as far as tomorrow night. I can look it over here at Matt. It looks like he's getting questions. Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor. Yeah. Uh, first question tonight going to stick on the topic of the Harding Way project. Right. Uh, I had a question from Gene. Is it possible for the city to build up a rainy day fund for projects like the handicap ramps so we don't have to pay more in the end and um, you know, rather than spending on major park projects. Yeah, the, the I'm with you, Gene, all the way to the end. I don't think it's, I don't think it's either or with that. So yes, it is possible to build up a capital fund, and um, and I think ultimately, where this rainy day, how we cover this current project, it. I think it is as likely as any to come from the city's capital improvements fund. And I find that disappointing because I had hoped to use those dollars as they're paid to the city from uh, Mosier Industrial that bought the Commerce Center down there, the old crane plant. As those dollars flow into that fund, I had really hoped and, and it's still my intention to have the large percentage of that go to uh, uh, job creation, industrial development projects, but uh, a little bit like Gene was suggesting, if you have this rainy day fund, in this case we call a capital improvements fund, it may be what we utilize uh, to get these improvements done. So a um, little bit different way of asking the question, maybe there's some, is, um, you know, why is it necessary to, you um, um, comply with all these federal requirements. Well, you know, I suppose it's, I, it is true that if the city decided to build this project, which is resurfacing uh, Harding Way within uh, city limits, yeah, we could have done that. There's, there's no question about it. And I, and I sort of weighed it back and forth over the weekend and as the, as they were looking at the sites. But, um, at the same time, the, it is the federal law on American with Disabilities Act. It, it's, and, and this is not the same thing, but it is along the same lines. Uh, it goes back a couple of years. The city of Columbus built a whole bunch of improvements using federal dollars. It was a different kind of money than the federal highway dollars that will, will largely pay for our, our project. <clears throat> and they ignored those issues. And advocates for folks with disabilities came in and said, you know, the city of 
it's Columbus, the city of Columbus is all out of compliance. And they had to rip those up. So in that sense, I'm not crazy about bringing these into compliance. But on the other hand, I think anyone who's been uptown, there are some of those crosswalks that are, they defy logic. And, and I'm, what I'm hopeful of is that this project will uh, address that a little bit. And some of the handicapped crossings, they will flatten uh, those and make them a little easier to cross. But yeah, it's, and if I had to do a wild guess, I would say, what's this going to add to the project? I'm not sure if that question's on there. Uh, I'm guessing we've got a little over 400,000 we city in our share of that project. And I'd be surprised if it doesn't go up at least 100, maybe 150,000 more. So I wouldn't be griping about it quite as much if it wasn't of such significance. And then, we're, you know, if we either use capital improvements fund or we'll have to squeeze uh, the relatively small paving budget for the other projects. So if you ask what we're going to be doing in City Hall, we're going to be trying to trying to uh, work through that. But anyways, that would be probably another question. Okay, thanks, Mayor. Uh, yeah. Switching gears to another ongoing project, mm -hmm. uh, Mark wanted to know if there's an update on Charles Street. Yeah, it's it. Um, it's one of those projects where it'll be done, uh, you know, next week, or it'll be done in a week, which week kind of thing. To try to make a bad joke, um, they're supposed to be done uh, Thursday, which is the end of their week. They set up to work four tens. That has to do with the fact that they use union labor, and that's how they're set up. And we could say, well, you work Fridays. If we did that to get it done faster, it'd certainly be a premium. So just try to over-answer or ask a question that wasn't answered, because I go out there on Fridays, and I think, man, they could be done if they were working Fridays. And there's a reason for it. So anyway, um, I, you know, they're, they're hoping to be done this Friday. I'm not counting on anything before the end of the month. So it will be open to traffic uh, either tomorrow or certainly by the end of the week. But the cleanup, the straighten up people's front yards, uh, those sorts of things, uh, that's going to happen over the next couple of weeks. So. And that, that's, I mean, somebody who records these would say, well, that's what you said two weeks ago, you know, and I'd say, you know, you're right. I probably did, and that's what I thought two weeks ago. So the, I do believe, I'm almost certain that they'll have the roadway open. That part of it will be done, but they're far from being complete with the project. Okay. Hey, the other thing, the sewer works. So that was determined today. They pressurized the sewer. I mean, it's not like you can't just all of a sudden start flushing stuff in there and so they had some concerns, and they got that squared away. So, you know, if, it's not funny, but with you know, in a few weeks after it's done, the main thing is that it works and uh, the the roadways in a, a, a passable condition. We of course have to then tackle the issue of getting uh, the residents out there who haven't been on sewer tied into the sewer, and that's a separate question for for. Uh, Council, the mayor's office, and Monday night live stream over the next few weeks. Okay, thanks, Mayor. Mm -hmm. uh, next question we had tonight came from Dawn. She yeah. asked for an update on a grocery store. Yeah, you know, Dawn, there's uh, the, it's interesting. The, I expected a conversation, I think, started a week ago uh, to generate some discussion in the community. And, um, I think that's ongoing. Um, I just repeat what I've said before. It, it strikes me a chance to talk to some 40-somethings, like two different groups of them today. And although the meeting that I was at didn't have anything to do with the grocery store, I asked them just to get their feedback on it. They wanted something out of the mayor, so they kind of had to play along with me. And, and uh, these are the 40-somethings. And I consistently see that group of Galleonites who are not only the future, as they say, but in a big way, they're kind of the present of Galleon. 
and they're to me surprisingly um, they they don't see the need they see the benefit of it but they don't see the need and the more outspoken among those people um, believe that such an effort be kind of a failure that if you build a grocery store big small wherever it's at in town then it's bound to fail and so I sort of scratched my head Don and I'm really as you know and many most people know in the camp of trying to figure out how to make that happen and uh, have, have tried uh, just one or two more thoughts on this you'll see both on Facebook and you talk to people about this regardless of age um, a lot of people will say well the market will take care of that you know the city shouldn't be involved in that it's like you know I thought that two years ago myself and the market didn't take care of and we still need a doggone grocery store, so I'm, I'm, I'm not fed up, sort of. I'm determined to make that happen. I think if you build the right size and you find the right operator, I'm, again, the people who heard me go on or been responding to questions, I don't think a big Kroger. My wife and I went down, the, uh, we were in Mount Gilead and went to Kroger's. That's a neat store. You know, I, I, I wish, anyway, if we had somebody with three million bucks gonna build a shopping center like that, I'm sure we'd get Kroger to, to pay some attention, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a smaller scale operation that provides uh, some level of um, a fresh, I sound like a nutritionist here, but a, like fresh meat and produce. And we're lacking that and uh, so that's really what I'm pushing for. But to go back to the beginning, it surprises me in terms of getting a consensus around making that the or a top priority in town. Uh, we got we got uh, some uh, room to go. Um, people are saying we don't need a grocery store. Like a, they probably have a six-person vehicle, probably an SUV, and. Many of those people feel that we're probably double income people, but you know, Galleon's Galleon. We got a lot of of single wage earners. We've got an older population. A lot of folks who live on uh, pensions and and Social Security disability, and not just for that group of town, whatever that might mean, but that those Galleonites they're not really getting served very well, and. Uh, getting to the grocery and as I've said before getting to the grocery and back it's just one more favor that a person has to ask of a relative one more could you please do this for me and uh, I know particularly in caring for my mom for a number of years nobody likes that you know people that so I think people in town who don't get around real well would like to have a grocery store and I don't think it's too much to ask How's that for over answering the question? You think I was running for something? <laughs> uh, Mayor, I, I did want to point out that Don yeah. suggested that uh, it should just be remodeled, I think, in reference to the former Geyers. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. The, the uh, w When the for sale sign goes up, and that person who owns that, he has a lot of property for sale. <laughs> it's not Maybe even more abandoned than this one. So when that happens, we'll keep that in mind. Uh, and I'm, I'm probably at the risk of getting in trouble gonna be increasingly harsh about uh, the difficulty um, the, of the current ownership of that uh, shopping strip of Galleon West being serious about. I thought for a while there was, they were more interested in getting that space filled up than I was interested in having a grocery store. Oh man, I was wrong. I was wrong. Hardly care. Sort of care. Hardly care. That's just not accepted. So, yeah. I'm frustrated about smaller grocery store. Uh, any idea? And, and I'm since I'll go on. Maybe there are other questions. I talked quickly last week about what might work and what role the city or some public entity would have. And I, and I wasn't clear enough about the money that the city or perhaps Port Authority or some other entity would put in. That money would be recovered at the end. It's not like it's just thrown in. 
those dollars would be deferred until the rest of the money that would be used, paid by the tenant, would those obligations, that debt, if you will, would be taken care of on the front end, and at the tail end of that, the last couple of years, say the difference between seven and ten, the last few years, then the city uh, would get if. You know, if you it's crap sounds crass, but they get their money back out of it. For the people who think that economic development is dollar for dollar, that having a grocery and forty or fifty new jobs isn't enough. If you want to get your money out, that then that that construction project and lease buyback could be handled that way. So, um, so anyway. I don't want to get any more frustrated than that, but it, there's a plan that's responsible and it doesn't pit, you know, it doesn't make one part of the taxpayers pay for something for the other part. So, anyways. Okay, thanks, Mayor. <laughs> uh, let's see, next question that came from Heath. He asked, yeah. when can we anticipate a funding plan for the Free Center to be presented to Council for a vote? Yeah, I don't, the, I don't know quite how to answer that. I think the short answer to that question is there's a Port Authority meeting tomorrow, and there's a review of, a, of an engineer's estimate, architect's estimate, and we'll kind of see from there. The, the way I would see it going, uh, more specifically, is that at some point, if the Port Authority wants to access freeze funds through the city, then they're going to have to come to City Council, make that presentation. We want this much money, and this is how we think um, the city or, or the freeze fund could afford it. And then the way I see that is, and would encourage uh, Port Authority board members or advocates for the project to work through that committee. Something that's been happening a little bit, I'm not gonna get out too ouchy about it, but I think advocates for the project that go directly to uh, council members, instead of working through that Economic Development Airport Committee, I think they uh, diffuse their energy and they run the risk of having more than one message out there about the, about the, the free center. So. Keith or other people can do what they want with that advice, but what I would suggest is they go through the committee. And then you have to have strong support. Uh, they, I think they have to understand, meaning council members, what the risks are. Uh, there's been, I think some, I think the cost of the project may cause some rethinking, but we'll let the uh, Port Authority look at the, at the, uh, architect's estimate and see if they're see how or whether or not this is an increase in cost so that's kind of fuzzy worded but I would work through the committee and then the way it would work is that um, uh, committee would um, agree and vote on to overall City Council uh, a request to the freeze foundation for whatever that turns out to be. And, uh, and, and then at that point, uh, if, if he's who I think it is, then the people on the Freeze Foundation will vote on that request, decide uh, whether or not to, um, and I think what we're talking about here is liquidating some amount. I understand now it's around 10.8 million, but I think that's the discussion. Um, the, the thing that council has to get comfortable with is the money that doesn't come as a liquidation. And that's, I think, it's going to be more than what council might be interested in liquidating. Uh, the city's going to have to guarantee uh, that they would pledge future years of the Freeze Foundation um, uh, income. Uh, to guarantee whatever debt the port would issue. So that's more than an answer that, that uh, maybe he asked for. Maybe if you're looking for the short answer is start with the council committee, gain their support, get the overall uh, support of city council. And then uh, the tough question for the Freeze Foundation 
board members is whether or not they want to exercise something that's in the will but has not been done before, and that's the liquidation or partial liquidation in this case uh, for a rec center. Uh, that's in the will, a, a community rec center, I can believe is the language. But, uh, so I think it qualifies. The question is, would uh, the Freeze Foundation go with a, a liquidation of all or part of it? Tough thing about this meeting, it's hard to get, like I imagine Heath would like to ask a follow-up question. It's kind of hard to do that. With, so if there's another question along those lines, let's go to that. I don't want to drone on about it, but it's, it's the, the issue is with the sides, that not sides have been taken, but for the free center, against the free center, is that, that neither of those points of view are benefited with a lot of information about, well, I'm for it, but how much is it going to cost? And like, how are we going to pay for it? I think those are legitimate questions, and they don't lend themselves to a 22-second answer. You have to sort of sit here and sift through my way of describing stuff. And then if you're over here on the, I don't want to do this side, I think there has to be more than the arm crossed, I just don't want to do it. They, you kind of have to understand what damage would be done to the beneficiaries of the freeze fund, both scholars and or community projects. And like the, and what advocates will say, well, if we're not going to build this, then what do you want to do with it? I think for opponents of the, of the free center, I think that's something that folks undecided need to hear about that. It's like, okay, well, if we're going to save this money and we're not going to build this project, well, what are we going to do with it? And I think it's a kind of a complicated question. And it, and it isn't, I mean, I can see people shaking their head right now. That is not that it, it, I'm making it complicated. It is complicated. And I get real frustrated with people who want an, an instant answer. You for it or you against it? Well, I'm for it if it doesn't cost too much and there's a reasonable way to pay for it. How's that for us? politicians answer so complicated subject doing it right can be of great impact for the city doing it wrong people will be left with uh, well okay almost a so what and I don't want to be associated with either I want to make sure what we build works and it works for citizens in the area and might be of benefit to regional youth sports Regional as and outside the county. Local, I think, said so. every kid in the county should get a chance to shoot baskets, kick a soccer ball, uh, do whatever else ends up getting built there. Uh, but it's it looks like it's largely going to be a galleon project. So sharing it with our neighbors is going to be is going to be an important part of making this work and have a lot of people out there. So everything you ask and more, Heath. <laughs> What else you got, man? Okay, thanks, Mayor. Uh, yeah. Switching the topics here. This question came from Cindy. Yeah. Uh, will there be an auction for the Sleep Inn Hotel? You know, uh, it could be, Cindy. I if 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 I had my way, and you know, the mayor doesn't get his way very much. It's no empire, but I would hope that there'd be a private sale, an offer made before it goes to auction. Uh, right now, as far as I understand, uh, it still doesn't have a receiver, somebody that the court puts in charge as this goes through the foreclosure and, and um, uh, the failure of the company. Okay. Um, I like the guy. I'd like to, I just, the whole thing makes me sick to my stomach. But what we have to do is protect the city's interests. So we're kind of working on that, making sure that the money that's owed to us doesn't get away of a private sale before there's some sort of auction and um, not, not fire sale, but certainly a forced sale in an auction, I think, like Cindy's suggesting. It, 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 it's probably not good for anyone if it, if it comes to that. So my hope and expectation is that that um, some uh, other hotel operators will step in. I do believe that 
um, going ahead with the with the free center will have some positive impact. But I think it's an exaggeration to say, well, if three centers there, this thing will uh, sell just like that. Or if the free center was there, this wouldn't have happened. It's a COVID, you guys. Like, man, COVID's knocked the snot out of the whole travel sports industry. So, um, anyway, Cindy, I think it will probably transact to a new owner before it goes to an auction. But... You never know. You show up on the auction on the right day, you can somehow you can end up with 20, 30 acres of property for next to nothing. So It's been known to happen in Gallia. Uh, those are all the questions I had for this evening. So I've alienated everybody or uh, I've answered all their questions. But anyways, they, the, uh, they're big topics. Uh, close by saying that there are some um, other activities that are going on that are designed to open up housing property and uh, I'm, I'm more encouraged than I've been in months that we're going to get some forward momentum we're going to get some developers slash builder developers that are going to uh, hit the market for homes that certainly <laughs> My wife and I live in a more modest home, but the, but these kids today, you know, they they just buy anything. So they, they seem to have a different appetite. So in terms of the kind of home, I know interest rates are hard to imagine for somebody who, you know, bought a home back in the early 80s. But um, so I'm really encouraged by that activity. And uh, I think nothing does more to... Uh, make the statement that Galleons uh, moving in the right direction uh, than it is to get um, new housing construction in in the seventy five to one hundred thousand dollars sort of small working family starter homes uh, have nice apartments up for sale have older houses available because people are moving into assisted living and then have, if you will, upper end apartments uh, growing from 36 to what we hope is 90 some. So, you know, you got to pull all these things off. Just the announcement of them doesn't make them happen. So I think together we'll get this done and guy will look a, a little bit different. And then certainly the difference will be positive. So, all right, with that, see you later. Thanks for listening. Good night.